Forgiveness. One of the most difficult things we have to do in the course of our lives. I think most would agree. Now, forgiveness can be somewhat easy when it's uh, some minor hurt that was caused you, especially between two people who really care for each other, like each other, love each other. In every relationship, there's always ups and downs, always hurts, and so you say, I forgive you, and you say, I'm sorry, and you move forward. Hopefully that happens a lot in marriages and families and among good friends, that we can easily forgive and move on. We can make our apologies as well. Forgiveness is a little more difficult when someone you don't like, maybe someone, sadly, you call an enemy, hurts you again. Or when a stranger does something. Or maybe someone with whom you're really close, a relative or spouse or a brother or sister, but they do something really, really hurtful. Not, not just some minor thing, but really hurts you, really do something bad. Forgiveness is very difficult in that situation. Very difficult. Yet we're told over and over again that as God forgives us, there's nothing that God will not forgive. We are challenged to be just as forgiving to those in our life. Now, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness isn't whitewashing what was done wrong. If someone steals from you, someone lies to you, if you're cheated on in your marriage, that's wrong, that's an evil, that's bad. We're not saying forgiveness whitewashes that. Well, stealing isn't so bad. Lying's okay, don't worry about it, keep on lying. Adultery's not all that bad, go ahead. No, forgiveness is saying evil is evil, but I have to let it go. I have to move on. I forgive you. I don't say what you did was okay, but if we're going to maintain a relationship, then somehow I have to let it go. And that's difficult. That's difficult. We heard that in the parable. The master kind of lets the servant go with quote, him a huge, huge amount. Because oftentimes when we hold a grudge against someone who's hurt us, Sometimes they're not even aware of the grudge, even if we half-heartedly said, I forgive you. But that grudge held inside us is like a spiritual cancer. It keeps eating away at us. So we simply have to, to let it go and let it be. Sometimes it means that we, we have to move on. Now, forgiveness is not vengeance. Forgiveness isn't saying, I'll pay you back. I'll get even. Sometimes people brag, I don't get mad, I get even. So if someone steals your car, okay, I'll go and steal their car. No. Remember, Jesus wiped that out. He said, no longer eye for eye, tooth for tooth. That's not part of my way anymore. Now, don't forget justice. It's important. If someone steals a car or commits a big crime, there's justice involved. They pay the penalty. They, they pay the fine. They're put in prison. Justice is right. But again, to make sure justice fits the crime. I've heard the phrase, you know, don't swat a fly with a sledgehammer. So someone, you know, steals, you know, your car, and you say, I want the car back, and a million dollars in personal damage, that's a little excessive. So we have to look at sometimes our penal system and see, does the crime fit the punishment? Hopefully it does. But again, that's so very difficult. Now, you've heard the phrase, forgive and forget. I'm not sure if we can do that. Our brain has a better memory chip than any computer. I think it should be rewarded, forgive, and never mention it again. You know, I used to be very involved in a retreat program called Engaged Encounter, and they gave rules to the engaged couples for fighting. And one rule was no past history. And past history was defined as once it's 48 hours past, you can never bring it up again. That's difficult. Difficult, I know. And so here's what happens. Something went wrong between a husband and wife. The one who did wrong says, I'm sorry. The one who was the victim says, I forgive you. Whew. The one who did wrong starts to heal. And then three weeks later, the one who was referring to, remember three weeks ago when you did this? Oh, I thought you forgave me. Why are you bringing that up again? And it's like if you saw my hand and there was a scab in my hand, and you come and rip the scab off, and I said, why did you do that? And he said, I just love to see you bleed, Father Bill. Well, what kind of sick person are you? So the same thing, when you've forgiven someone, and you mention it again, you open that wound again, that emotional wound, and they start hurting all over again. I know that's difficult to do. Sometimes you may be still in such anger, you might say, well, I can't forgive you right away, but give me a couple hours, or give me a day. You've heard also the advice, never go to bed angry at your spouse. It's usually good advice. But sometimes you may be just so tired, so worn out, you need a good night's sleep. 
to come back to the issue in the morning. Don't sweep it under the rug. Don't wish the problem will go away. Those are all aspects of forgiveness. Very, very important. Now, are there any great examples of big forgiveness? There sure are. Hundreds of them. I'm going to talk about three. October 2nd, 2006, Charles Carl Roberts IV went to an army school in Pennsylvania and with his gun shot 10 little girls. Five of them were killed. Five survived, but seriously injured. That Amish community went to his funeral. They brought food to his widow for many, many weeks. That's true forgiveness. They were criticized for that, saying he didn't ask for forgiveness. He, he died as well. I forget whether he shot himself or police shot him. You don't have to ask for forgiveness. Rush to offer forgiveness. May 13th, 1981, in Vatican City, Pope John Paul II was shot at by a would-be assassin, Meged Ab Med Mehmet Agha. Two years later, on Christmas Eve, 1983, John Paul II went to his prison cell and forgave him. And they became friends. Big acts of forgiveness. And I'm not sure if Mehmet asked for forgiveness either. But the best example, of course, is Jesus Christ. 2,022 years ago or so, something like that. As he hung on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. In the process of being murdered by them, he forgave them. They didn't ask for forgiveness. The Romans, the hierarchy of the Jewish community, they wanted him dead. So those are dramatic examples of forgiveness. Hopefully none of us have things that big, murder in a family or whatever. But we pray the Lord's Prayer, most of us probably at least once a day, if not more often than that. That line, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We mean that. God says to every one of us, I forgive you. And God says, will you do, do the same to those who hurt you? And sometimes, again, the hurt is so big, so bad, maybe the healthiest, most Christian thing we can do is have a healthy distance between us and that person. For some persons, their lives, sadly, it's like oil and water. We just don't mix. So wish them well, pray for them. Never try to get even with them. Never try to pay back the evil they did. But part as company, maybe that's the nicest thing you can do. Forgiveness. It's the central teaching of Catholic morality. Let us forgive one another as we are guaranteed God forgives us. Amen.